Welcome to the Superpowers for Good Show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe, and I'm thrilled to have you here today. And I'm really excited to have with us today, Kevin McClendon and Ben Robel from uh, Proximate Press. We're, we're so excited. Uh, they're doing some amazing work around participatory philanthropy and investing. And this is really a world changing initiative that they're really a, a critical part of. So join me in welcoming uh, Kevin and Ben to the show today. Ben, Kevin, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. No problem. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much. We're, we're thrilled. Uh, Kevin, I wonder if you would just take a minute and give us a quick overview introduction to Proximate. Uh, yeah, so Proximate is a media platform that amplifies and connects movements for participatory problem solving. Uh, we're a home for stories about creative, community-driven models that shift power to people with lived experience or those proximate to the problem. It really is uh, an important uh, initiative, right? I, I think, you know, the one of the big fundamental criticisms of the world's biggest and some would argue best philanthropists is that they are so removed from the problems that they're trying to solve, they are unable to allocate capital to the right uh, solutions. Um, ben, tell us a little bit about how you have helped develop this uh, effort, where how this has grown. Sure. And so, you know, you could see behind Kevin's head, uh, Letting Go is a book that um, I wrote with Meg Massey uh, back in 2021. Um, and we I, I worked for a participatory investing uh, nonprofit called Village Capital that shifted decision making power away from investors and towards entrepreneurs closer to the problem. Um, that led me and Meg to look into, you know, who else is doing this? Who else is um, allocating capital? whether they're philanthropists, whether they're impact investors, whether they're working for a government who's doing it in a, in a participatory way that, that shifts power to people with lived experience. Uh, we wrote Letting Go and we found that there was so much more to say, um, even looking beyond the fields of philanthropy, beyond the field of impact investing and government, there's, there's work happening at universities to do participatory action research. There's work in major health systems to have community-driven health solutions. Uh, in the climate movement, there's a big push for community-driven uh, pr disaster preparation plans. And with Proximate, we're trying to build on that legacy of letting go and really connect, like Kevin was saying, these movements for participatory problem solving. This is such an exciting field, and it's one I'm, I'm passionate about. I, I am especially fond of uh, impact crowdfunding, as you know, and see crowdfunding as kind of the ultimate participatory uh, capital uh, vehicle. But of course, part of the key there is for uh, big investors to take cues from small investors rather than vice versa. Kevin, have you given any thought to how you can institutionalize that pattern of big investors following the cue of the small rather than vice versa? Yeah, I think for one, it starts with the idea of listening um, to what a community is actually asking for and not having this top down approach where we get to decide what they're trying to do. Um, and then as well, there are a lot of interesting large venture firms that I personally know of who are exploring some unique investment opportunities in a way. They're not inherently participatory, but they're finding methods of how to give back to the founders that they're working with. Yeah. It's uh, an interesting discussion. One of the challenges with uh, entrepreneurship and impact investing are some of the risk sharing uh, analyses, right? And uh, Ben, I think you know that there are some really innovative things going on in in this space, but um, it is kind of an interesting tension uh, between, uh, wealthy investors and underprivileged entrepreneurs who are raising capital, right? How should that risk be shared? And then uh, in a world of crowdfunding, many of the investors now are in the same boat as the entrepreneurs. How do you share risk in that situation when the investors are not wealthy, but they're ordinary like the entrepreneurs? Uh, how do you think about that, Ben? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting there, this idea of community driven investing and participatory problem solving, I, I almost think of it like, uh, and it, uh, imagine it as a technology innovation that is almost ahead of its time because the operating system that's needed for it is not there. You know, just like an app could be ahead of its time because the the um, uh, the operating system on a phone is not fast enough that you know at that time. I think that there are these broader systems within our society, like these questions of how does fiduciary duty work, um, how do investors get paid out, in what order, capital stacks that actually need change changing at the same time as this question of who makes decisions needs changing. Um, so for instance, the Boston Ujima Fund, which does have a model where folks in, a, in this neighborhood in Boston who are uh, BIPOC and um, uh, or were displaced from their neighborhood, they make decisions about what kind of um, business they wanna see in their neighborhood. In addition to that question of how does that decision get made, they also have in, introduced a uh, inverted capital stack where the folks who put in the least money get money back first. So I, I think that there needs to be these broader changes um, in government and financial systems as well as these participatory models. That is absolutely brilliant. I'm excited to drill down and learn more about that because I think that is a, such an important principle. You know, we, we want small investors right. in the game. And we want them to be able to earn fair returns. Uh, at the same time, we want to support entrepreneurs. And when foundations are deploying capital, it seems to me to make sense to ask the foundations, especially uh, to take a haircut on the financial returns uh, as part of their mission. So this is really a, a complicated thing. And I'm glad smarter people than I are, are working on this. Uh, so, uh, but I think the concept of participatory stuff that you are working on you alluded to this at the top kevin but it's really a broad ranging topic that isn't limited to capital even though you and ben came from uh, uh village capital where it was very focused on entrepreneurs and capital this is as you mentioned it's happening in universities it's happening everywhere um can you give us a sense of some of the work of proximate that is not related to capital? Yeah, we have a really broad subject lens um, covering a wide range of issue areas and sectors. Um, it's kind of targeted universalism in a way. Um, so we've talked about something, we're the only platform where you can find how a sex worker film festival and a food bank are solving for the same variables. Um, there's also examples where we speak to um, things happening in Malawi where they're working on climate change. Uh, there's medical care, um, how medical research can be forwarded through participatory methods. There's citizen science. There's uh, building more equity into the creative econ economy. Um, ultimately, it's all about um, giving more voice to marginalized communities as well. Yeah. It, it, it. It really is uh, important to do that. And uh, at Proximate, Ben, uh, maybe you could just walk us through, you know, what are the activities and outputs of Proximate that allow sure. you to be a player in this space? Yeah, so, you know, we asked ourselves at the beginning, you know, what is it that we do well, right? We, um, from letting go and um, from, you know, Kevin's experience at, at Village Capital, we know we can convey information in a compelling way in, in a short, you know, quick, quick manner. Um, what we do at the end of the day is produce journalism. We um, are focused on solutions journalism specifically, our, our most ambitious pieces, the pieces that we're able to hire out for. Um, we are basically finding people who live in a community, for instance, right now where, uh, and, and then writing about a solution in their community that, that has to do with uh, participatory problem solving. Right now, we're working on a piece uh, about disaster response in Puerto Rico. Um, there have been countless disasters in Puerto Rico and a lot of criticism that whether it's the federal government or philanthropists, you know, those who come in are not engaging those who actually live um, live, live on the island. And um, we are um, hiring a local journalist and um, writing a piece about what does locally led disaster response look like? And we're gonna cover, you know, what does it look like in philanthropy? What does it look like in government, um, in impact investing? Um, so 
we write articles, right? Um, in addition to that, we're, we're testing out newsletters. You know, Kevin threw out a lot of different topics from universities to citizen science to participatory grant making. We know that that's a lot, right? Those are different worlds with different audiences, um, but that's, that's, that's a feature, not a bug. Um, we've developed these collections of stories that ask a specific question, like, you know, can citizen science help uh, drive drive science on, on, on issues serving marginalized communities. Um, we have one collection we're working on. Um, what does it look like to involve people with lived experience in the mental health care system? Um, we have one collection on what's the future of participatory grant making. Um, and with each of those collections, we're partnering with a, a nonprofit that is proximate to that issue. Um, someone who's already advocating on, on, on this behalf of, of lived experience in this particular area. And we're going to produce articles. Um, and we hope that people come to our website looking to learn about participatory grant making. Maybe they learn about citizen science and vice versa. Um, but what we want to be is a uh, clearinghouse for that kind of journalism. It is such an Im important role. And, and of course, solutions journalism is a growing at, but vital discipline that is well structured, well honed, well understood by the professionals in that space. Uh, uh, in a past life, I, I counted myself among them uh, uh, as a podcaster. I, I, I no longer think of myself, strictly speaking, as a solutions journalist, but I, I fo focus on solutions, perhaps. Um, uh, my, my my vulnerability is uh, my my love for people, uh, including the people that are playing key roles. And the solutions journalism crew uh, often wants to look beyond the person to the uh, to the activity, which is easier to replicate. And I'm convinced that's the uh, the the weakness of of solutions journalism because as I you know as I'm thinking about proximate as a subject uh, I see uh, Meg and Kevin and Ben as relevant to the story uh, and what makes you tick which is why when we come back in a minute we're going to talk to Ben and Kevin and uh, we're going to talk to them about their superpowers because we want to understand what makes these folks tick makes them special. So don't leave. Stick around. You want to know uh, what really underlies the great people that Kevin and Ben are. Learn how to make money with your crowdfund investing at the September Super Crowd Hour webinar. Drawing on decades of finance experience, I'll teach you how to make money, not just a difference. You will increase your impact by increasing your financial returns. Register today at thesupercrowd.com. Want to learn from the world's great change makers? Find your superpower. Subscribe to the Superpowers for Good newsletter at superpowersforgood.com. Make your strengths into superpowers that will change the world. Join the super crowd today. Superpowers number four, good.com. Hi, I'm Julianne Meyer, the host of Own Your Wellness, and you can watch my show on Mondays and Thursdays from 4 to 5 p.m. Pacific on Achieve TV right here on E360 TV. Remember, there's more to health and wellness than broccoli and burpees. Welcome back. I'm so thrilled today that we have with us Kevin McClendon and uh, Ben Rogel, who are uh, the co-founders, uh, along with Meg Massey, who's not with us today, uh, at Proximate. And uh, they are doing incredible work in helping uh, people begin to be more participatory and including people proximate to the problem uh, in a variety of disciplines from impact investing to philanthropy and government. So uh, extraordinary conversation. We're gonna talk to them now about their superpowers. Uh, you know, Kevin and Ben, what you're doing is critically important. Uh, and Kevin, let's let's start with you. But but you're a young guy, you've accomplished so much. Uh, and launching and being a key part of launching uh, Proximate is an, a, an incredibly important accomplishment. Uh, and you're, of course, you're, you're tr uh, your, your record and your work uh, at uh, Village Capital is, is vitally important as well. 
Uh, and so I, I, I look at your career and see you as a very accomplished individual and think, um, how did you do that? And what do you see as your superpower, Kevin? Uh, I see my superpower as diversity of experience. Um, I was born in a very small and very poor uh, suburb of Detroit called Highland Park. Um, and now I work as outside of Proximate as an investment analyst for Gutter Capital. So I have been in situations where I've had zero dollars and I can speak that language. And now I'm the middleman for people to uh, get investments of a million dollars. And I don't think that there's too many people in the world who have that broad of a perspective and can see all of those angles. And that's not even speaking to all of the things in the middle where working in the nascent um, entrepreneurial ecosystem of a Detroit coming out of this bankruptcy and moving into recovery. I worked with a lot of startups doing marketing and I did that pro bono for a variety of different industries. So I have the perspective that I can kind of see everything all at once. That really is a, uh, a powerful superpower. And uh, Ben, published author, uh, you know, key leadership role at Village Capital, and now co-founder at Proximate. What, what is your superpower? I think it's something to do with helping people tell their story. Um, I, you know, when I first got into doing communications, I was, I thought it was a bit of a broad category i didn't really see the, the the big big vision behind it but what i've done whether working as a as the chief speech writer for the national naacp uh working to help um you know village capital write write its book um and and telling stories through letting go and proximate is i like to find people who are um either who have big ideas right um and who are really good at getting things done but maybe don't know a lot about writing or um explaining what they do in language that is universal um i love what kevin said earlier about target universalism you know we we i think i pride myself for sure on on being able to talk about um science you know scientific research and uh, municipal government government and um philanthropy um you know all, all at the same time and, and try to um and, and and make sure that anyone who's doing that work that we're profiling um we can explain what they're doing in a way that's easy to understand. Yeah, that is uh, an incredible superpower. And I, I'm a little jealous because I, I as, as one who writes, I wish I had your ability to capture those stories. Uh, as I think you, you, you do quite a good you're, job at it too, though. <laughs> well, you're very kind, thank you. But um, Kevin, I wanna come back to you and we, I need you to be brief. We're, 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 we're getting low on time, but can you think of a quick example you can share that demonstrates your superpower of uh, that diversity of perspective? Uh, sure, um, quick example. Uh, so in uh, writing um, for the participatory, the rise of participatory ESOs, our most recent project that we've announced, um, because I've worked with a lot of the different industries that we covered, I had the insider um, look, so to speak, that I'm not writing as someone who's lived on the outside. I'm writing as someone who has um, both worked inside of these organizations and as well been a person who has been in a position to receive, receive the results of what these organizations are attempting to accomplish. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Ben, a quick example from you of how you've exercised sure. your storytelling superpower. Sure, I think um, one, of the, one of the organizations, one of the participatory grant making funds that we profiled in Letting Go um, they'd been doing this work for 10 years um, and just, you know, had a website and were well known in their small community, but really hadn't been, you know, we're not on, on the radar um, of a lot of other folks in philanthropy or, or, or beyond. And, you know, we wrote a whole chapter about them in the book. And, and shortly after that, their, um, their founder and CEO left. And she actually said to me, you know, I feel like my legacy is, is more secure now. You know, I, our, our story has been told. And I know that since then they've um, been able to raise a good amount of money. I, I don't think that it's entirely because of letting go, but I think that um, that's really also what I'm hoping to accomplish with Proximate. You know, every time um, we we write an article about somebody, we we hope that it will be used, um, you know, um, so that they can they can share it and they can talk about themselves um, and and the work they're doing in a way that they can be proud of. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, Kevin, 
again, being brief, can you give us one or two quick tips to help us all increase our diversity of perspective so that we're, we stop looking through our own lens, our own traditional perspectives? break the silos and identify the similarities. Um, stop creating these false barriers between groups uh, and thinking that, um, learn from what another person is doing. You and Ben both mentioned it earlier where you spoke about podcasting versus solutions journalism, that we can take tips from podcasts and you can take tips from us. Um, and that's Proximus whole pitch. We talk about these disparate um, topics, but ultimately the goal is learn from what the other side is doing and take their lessons. Great, great message, great message. Ben, if you're trying to help people be better storytellers, what are some key quick tips that you would share? Um, I think that what I've often seen, when people try to write, um, type, uh, you know, write an op-ed, write an essay, write about their work, um, they often are intimidated by a blank screen. I would say, say the words out loud that you wanna say. Um, describe what you're doing to someone in your life, in your family, and and then take that. Uh, there's some great AI um, recording softwares out there like Otter AI, O-T-T-E-R. Turn on Otter and start talking. Um, this is something people used to do way back in the day. Take a recorder, speak into it. Um, that is one of the best ways to write is speak into your computer and then figure out what you just said. Interesting. That is a fascinating approach. I um, you know, I, I do that inadvertently in, in, in another way, right? I, I transcribe all the podcasts and go through it and look for the genius insights from my guests. Uh, and it is amazing how much I learn from my guests on that read, that thoughtful analysis of every word they're sharing. And I can tease out insights that I didn't get from uh, just listening to them. Uh, I hadn't thought that I could apply that to myself. Maybe I'm smarter than I thought. I'll have to try that. So great tip, Ben. Um, listen, I'm really grateful to both of you taking the time. And uh, Kevin, I wonder if you'd take a minute and just tell people how they can uh, learn more about Proximate, how they can subscribe, uh, what the program is. Give us a little bit of the detail there. And then if you would... Um, then uh, tell us how we can get in touch with you, what what your preferred method is, how people can follow you on social media, et cetera. Sure. Uh, for Proximate, the easiest way is to go to proximate.press. That's our website uh, as well. Please go to Patreon to support us on there. Um, sign up for our upcoming newsletters. Uh, just join the list. Um, follow us on all relevant social medias. So we're on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook right now, still figuring out the Twitter slash X scenario. Um, and for myself, I'm on LinkedIn as Kevin McClendon. Uh, and I'm on Instagram as KVN McClendon. Um, and I feel free to uh, email me at any time at Kevin at proximate.press. Say hello and um, especially talk to me about things like participatory problem solving and uh, sustainable capitalism. I'd love to hear it. Great. And uh, Ben, before we wrap up, why don't you take a minute and uh, add anything you want to uh, how to connect and with Proximate, but then tell us how sure. to, you like to be connected with and where people can follow you on social media. Sure. Uh, well, we're, we're looking for partners right now at Proximate, and we really have three types of partners. Um, content partners who work with us to, uh, again, commission content, write content so that their content partners are, are producing uh, collections with us. Um, platform partners are, are folks who want to cross post our content, um, cross post our stories, whether you're a, a niche media outlet or, um, or have a newsletter or a big LinkedIn following. And then of course, funding partners, we are a nonprofit fiscally sponsored. Uh, we are, we are raising money. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you feel like you fit in any of those categories of content platform or funding partners, uh, reach out and you can reach me at, uh, Ben at proximate.press. Fantastic. Well, uh, we are grateful. Uh, to both of you for taking the time to be with us today. We are uh, thrilled by the work that you're doing and wish you every success in uh, bringing better uh, solutions, the proximate solutions, right, to problems around the world, the, the, the global problems like climate change, 
that affect communities around the world in different ways and the and the local problems the genuinely local problems that can only properly be solved by those who are living in the experience of of experiencing so uh we want to see you succeed in every possible way so uh we, we, we want to so thank you very much for being here thank you yeah it's been a pleasure to have you now let's do some good <laughs>